Hey, what's up everyone? Paul from Grindhouse Funhouse. I recently was in the mood to watch some late 70s low budget shot in the Philippines movie and the king of those kind of movies and Filipino exploitation cinema as a whole is unquestionably Serio H. Santiago. The man does have a robust filmography and the 70s being his golden era. And against my better judgment, I went with 1978's Vampire Hookers starring the well into his late in life horror slash grindhouse face John Carradine. It's a simple story about Terry and Tom, played by Trey Wilson and Bruce Fairbairn, two fun-loving sailors on shore leave in the Philippines, whose only goal is to get laid. While at the bar with their commending officer, he hits it off with a woman and gets driven to a cemetery to get it on. The next day when he doesn't show up, they go out looking for him, spot the cab driver that took their friend away, follows into the cemetery and finds out that an old vampire pimp played by John Carradine as a bevy of vampiric beauties at his disposal to lure victims to their lair and to become their meal. When Tom alerts the authorities and they go with him to check out the cemetery, once there, they quickly decide it's not worth their time, they leave him behind, and Tom is surprised by Pavel, played by Vic Diaz, a bumbling, idiotic servant who desperately wants to be a vampire, knocks him out and is taken prisoner. While he's about to face certain death, he'll at least go out with a bang. Can his buddy Terry, the only person left looking out for him, save him in time? As an exploitation movie, that's not really horror or something you could loosely call a comedy because I saw it described as a horror comedy, you get barely your money's worth. The pacing of this story is painfully sluggish, a lot of it you can tell they were trying to pad the running time and that was only 80 minutes. If there's one thing I appreciated from Vampire Hookers was the moon, the atmosphere shooting in 16mm in the Philippines gives you the crappy bars for the Philippine nightlife, the cemetery location, the underground lair, uh, the weird shit the production design put on the walls. I was down with all of that. John Carradine was 200 plus deep into his filmography and was in his early 70s, so by that point, clearly he had no fucks left to give and was just having a good time playing the father figure to three vampire scenes. This was not a Hugh Hefner situation that the Playboy mentioned, more of a go get me food so I can live forever situation. A man comes. I hope it's a red blooded American this time. Fun fact, his character name was Richmond Reed, which was the real name of John Carradine, Richmond Reed Carradine. Almost every line spoken by him comes from poems or excerpts from Shakespeare plays. Being himself a Shakespearean actor, I guess they just let him loose and just made it fun for him. What the hell is this? That, my friend, is not the question. To be or not to be, that is the question. I mean, being in the Philippines, besides the paycheck and the craft service, you still gotta make it interesting for him to show up. So him sitting in a chair at the beginning of the movie with his opening speech taken from Juliet's soliloquy in Romeo and Juliet with a stuffed big cat wrapped next to him, that was just on par for the course. Trey Wilson and Bruce Fairbairn playing the uh, sailors give fairly innocuous, unmemorable performances. The uh, lady vampires, only Leka Novak, stood out for me for two obvious reasons. And Vic Diaz, who always played the dumb or the jolly evil fat man in so many 70s Filipino exploitation movies. Half of them were in Serio H. Santiago movies. His performance in the Vampire Hookers can be summarized with this. <laughs> What else are you going to get from watching Vampire Hookers? Well, first of all, so many bad one-liners. Not in a coffin. Coffins are for being laid to rest. Not for being laid. This is not death. It's murder. It's not murder. It's dinner. This place is loud enough to blow eardrums. It's not my eardrums. I want blown. There's a nearly 10 minutes long orgy scene all in slow-mo that is the unsexiest foursome I've ever seen, and I've seen quite a few. Also, if you ever wanted to see Big Diaz masturbate, I mean, just the act of it, you don't actually see anything. If that was on your bingo card, then you wish will be granted. You'll see him get high on his own fart supply. And sleeping in a coffin mark, head, feet, which I'll admit, got a chuckle out of me. You wanna see John Carradine shooting a rat with a crossbow? You got it. The comedy there is in Vampire Hookers is on the level of Abbott Costello or comedy is mine out of unknowingly being in the Lady Boy Bar in the Philippines and isn't that hilarious. In 2024, it's a bit cringe, but I'm sure 1978, it was hilarious. 
Something you'll learn and I wasn't aware of is how night turns into day in an instant in the Philippines. Back inside. Or how Pavel Wu finally becomes a vampire by just being knocked out on the head and somehow wakes up with fangs. His happiness of him jumping around in the lair causes the whole place to collapse. The movie ends on a fart because that's the kind of movie it is. I want to give a special shout out to Jamie Mendoza Nava who did the music for Vampire Hookers, which uh, some of it is actually pretty good. Some jazzy cues, some more rockish, some uh, a bit porno ish sprinkled throughout, and that killer theme song with award winning lyrics like. I would recommend Vampire Hookers if you've gone through your entire movie collection and you got Vampire Hookers left to watch, then I'd say go ahead. It's a shame because this had the potential to be a hugely entertaining piece of bloody, sexy, schlocky horror, but we got instead an unfunny camp comedy horror full of juvenile humor and zero gore. The movie title, the poster, and Lenka Novak's chesticles were the best things in Vampire Hookers. Right now, it's available to stream for free on Tubi and Plex, and if you want to get your hands on a physical release, you can, with the Vinegar Syndrome Drive-In Collection release, which is a double feature with another Serial H. Santiago movie film, Death Force, released the same year as Vampire Hookers. So that was my review for Vampire Hookers. Go visit all my socials at Grindhouse Funhouse. More exploitation movie reviews coming up soon, so stay tuned. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll say to you, ciao bye for now. <laughs>